Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cracking Addiction. My name is Dr. Fergal Armstrong. And once again, we have with us the great expert that is Dr. Richard Bradlow. Good evening, Richard. Good evening, Fergal. Thank you very much for having me on again. So I thought today we'd answer some of the questions that uh, people have been asking us in terms of various substances. So today we're going to focus on alcohol. So randomly, give us a couple of questions around alcohol. What are the common questions that people are asking about alcohol? Yeah, one, well, one thing I get asked about a lot, especially among sort of older men uh, that are worried about their physical health is, is, is alcohol, uh, questions about alcohol in relation to heart disease, high blood pressure. So I guess the first thing I would ask is, can alcohol cause high blood pressure? Yeah, yeah, that's a very good question. And this all started out, uh, I think, because of the French studies that demonstrated the the, the beneficial effects of red wine. Um, and there there is, red wine contains resveratrol, right, which is an antioxidant and it's very healthy for, you know, the body, the heart, the brain. And there is an effect of resveratrol on health, and there is an effect of red wine on health. However, the effect of the, the deleterious effect of alcohol on health um, outweighs the effect of resveratrol. So I think really the way that I look at it is if you're drinking with you know no more than two drinks a week then you're probably going to have a, a, a positive effect on, on mental health and your, um, your brain health and also your blood pressure. But if you're drinking any more than that, then, of course, there's this, there's this J-shape inflection, and then really your, your, um, your, uh, your blood pressure rises. And that's actually secondarily reflected in the mortality statistics. So for instance, if you look at the other side of the coin, we're not, not at the low levels of consumption, if you look at very high levels of consumption of alcohol, one of the top four causes of death associated with very high levels of consumption is actually um, hemorrhagic stroke. And really the main cause of hemorrhagic stroke is hypertension. So hypertension, I think to summarize, has kind of got a J-shaped response very low levels of alcohol may cause a reduction in blood pressure, but certainly once you go past two standard drinks a week, you're on the uh, you're on the upward inflection, and it's going to cause blood pressure problems. It, I, it does. It makes wonderful sense to me, Phil. But I just wanted to add two things to that. I mean, my first one would be surely there's a better way to get antioxidants rather than red wine. I don't <laughs> think that's a huge argument for red wine. How about be abstinent from alcohol and have many one of the many other ways to get antioxidants a lot of people just supplement with knack which is of course the sort of probably the most efficient way to get antioxidants but i hear it tastes quite awful and and then the second uh, thing would be your con sorry i would have thought that berry i, I would have thought that actually blueberries <laughs> eating a lot of blueberries a day is a very good way of getting antioxidants but you think that knack is is the best antioxidant well because knack is because uh, the, the the brain's main or the yeah the brain's main uh, antioxidant is of course well, you tell me. I don't know. <laughs> Glut glutathione. Uh, oh, glutathione. glutathione. Right, right. Glutathione. Right. Sorry. Um, way to stand back. Yeah. Your, so your NAC replaces with the correct, with the correct, correct. Well, no. Uh, the the main uh, uh, building block, the rate main rate limiting building block of you'll have to say that word again for me. Glu glu glutathione. Glutathione is NAC. Um, and if you're interested right, in more about right. this, you can read my uh, 32 citations paper, uh, Knack in Mental Illness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my most cited paper. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> but there, there are other, there are other uh, substances that are beneficial to brain health, sure. not just antioxidants, but also phytochemicals. Sure. Uh, you, know, um, you know, all, this, all the chemicals in, uh, in berries, strawberries blueberries uh, that, that actually cause the color they're all very good as well knack tastes um, horrible knack isn't knack tastes, yeah, sulfur, it it tastes it? like sulfur is what the, the trials i read i've never actually really encountered knack i've just I've just actually was an yeah. actually that's not true i was a i was a, a trial physician in a, in a trial on knack for alcohol use disorder so uh, and then the knack? other thing no i didn't i was the trial physician not the trial participant so i don't <laughs> didn't taste it um, so you've never tasted it <laughs> no I don't, I don't i don't feel the need to the other thing is that you said uh that you felt that high blood pressure 
with alcohol use disorder, it would be contributing to hemorrhagic strokes, which surely it would. But I would think that the main thing about extreme people, sorry, extreme levels of alcohol is going to uh, destroy your liver, which is going to cause you to have a clotting problem, which to me would make the, probably the, be the biggest risk factor for hemorrhagic strokes. So I think that'd be, Indeed, I'm sure you, you can... the poindexters that love to write it and correct us have put their pens away. Dear Dr. Armstrong, and then they wasted five minutes of their time. Um, All right. No, I this, agree with you. It, there, there, there's, a, there's, there's various ways of actually analysing the comorbidity towards the final end point, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Um, the the so second question, think, the second half of my question. Sorry. No, no, I was yeah. cutting you off. You go, you go, Fergal. Sorry. No, no, no. After you. After you. Made my oh. point. Was, uh, so we've used high blood pressure. Can it cause heart disease? Alcohol. Yeah. Again, so there's multiple ways that it can cause heart disease. So first of all, can it cause ischemic heart disease? Well, alcohol, if you drink too much of it, can, because of the calories, uh, lead to, and because of the effect on blood pressure, can lead to an acceleration of atherosclerosis. And atherosclerosis is one of the precursors to ischemic heart disease. So alcohol, per se, causes an abnormality of lipids. So if your cholesterol is too high, and especially if you've got a bad uh, cholesterol to good cholesterol ratio that's in the, heading in the wrong direction, that can be attributed to alcohol, and that can cause um, that can cause an ex uh, or be a contributor towards atherosclerosis. The the bigger issue, however, I think, is alcoholic cardiomyopathy, where and and that's really heart failure due to alcohol. And we know, for instance, that if you're drinking more than 60 grams of alcohol, or sorry, 50 grams of alcohol a day for six months, that that's going to actually put you at risk of developing heart failure because of alcohol. And there's a third reason why you might develop a heart, a heart issue, and that's because alcohol per se, as you have quite uh, eruditely explained in previous episodes, alcohol reduces thiamine absorption. And we always think about thiamine in the context of alcohol use disorder as, as causing Wernicke's encephalopathy. But thiamine deficiency can also cause uh, a, a cardiomyopathy. And there's a fourth reason why alcohol can cause heart failure. And that's also because heart fa uh, alcohol destroys the liver, causes cirrhosis, and you can get something called cirrhosis-associated cardiomyopathy. And then finally, there's a fifth reason, which is alcohol per se is toxic to the heart and cause can cause arrhythmias, including atrial fibrillation, and that too can affect heart function. So I, I would add a six. I would add a sixth ways. reason. All right, tell me sixth. Well, just the, the 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 pattern of alcohol use disorder causing a deterioration in health and a neglecting of of, of uh, a healthy lifestyle, yes. more likely to eat an unhealthy exactly. diet, more likely to be uh, malnourished, more likely yeah. to not not uh, not address health health issues. And actually, I think that sixth reason is probably the most important mm -hmm. reason because let's face it, I mean, you know, no, you know, if you've got a good going alcohol use disorder, it's really, I, I see this as a manifestation, if not a symptom of a greater lack of holistic ill, or a lack of holistic health, you know, mm -hmm. and, and this is the thing about being a specialist, isn't it? I, I, I don't know if you agree with this, but it's very easy to when you're a specialist to kind of lose sight of the fact that there's a person in front of you who needs to get up in the morning and live well mm. rather than just someone with say you know in my case someone with say an alcoholic cardiomyopathy or perhaps in your case someone with an alcohol associated or induced uh, um, or substance induced major depressive disorder you know mm. we do need to acknowledge the person in front of us and the entire lifestyle that that person is uh, engaging in Mm. Yeah, what do you think about that completely. do you think we do you think we lose focus do you, see, do you think we stop seeing the wood for the trees i think some people do i think that you and i are brilliant and don't but <laughs> <laughs> no I, I do think that one of the things we we pride ourselves is, is on being very holistically minded i'll never forget uh last year when i was seeing a patient who we'd um when we were working at the inpatient detox in a public hospital together and there was a patient with rip roaring uh, Wernicke's, but the uh, uh, with like very pronounced ataxia. But the cardio cardio the cardiologist reg cardiology reg uh, 
were wanted to send them to the detox unit. I was like, well, they've got pretty bad wernickeys. Have you walked them? She was like, I just, I just focus on the heart, mate. I don't walk the patients. I was like, <laughs> I was blown away by her, her zeroing in. Um, she was very, she repeated well, that several are, times that, in the conversation. Yeah, that's. Uh... That's why uh, that, that's why we are holistic caring practitioners. Rich, we've run out of time. Thanks very much, but I can't wait to speak to you again. That's all for today, folks. My name's Dr. Fergal Armstrong, and this has been Cracking Addiction. Yeah.